happens for Canisius. I mean, he's catching the ball and then he's distributing it. His teammates have to come up and make some plays. You, you know what he reminds me of? That it reminds me of a human pogo stick, right? You know, they always work just straight up and down. If you're on a pogo stick, you can't go 45 degree angles and get in the air. White does everything straight up and down and does it really, really quick. Jordan Henderson from Cincinnati, Ohio, Walnut Hills High School. McGuire checking in, trying to turn the corner. Belonk. Woo! How about that? Top 10, maybe. And you see Brendan McGuire eyeing at his teammate. Go, go. I'm going to give it to you. Belonk, if he had continued going in the direction he was going in as Fritz hits on the shot, would have ended up in the bench area, probably right in the lap of Ryan Harkins at the end of the bench. Able to throw that one up and get it to fall. Now, listen, let's clarify. I'm talking top 10 in a horse competition, right? Because we get H. If Belong pulls that on us, we're taking H, right? Right. No doubt. I'm not risking a hamstring. I'm just going to say H. You got to try. <laughs> no. no, Steve, you have to you try. You have to try. <laughs> you have to try. Too much fear in the humiliation on, on something <laughs> no. like Don't, that. You're going not... to be, be humiliated. <laughs> but once you know that, you got to become vulnerable to that, dude. Like, you got to be vulnerable. Benet Brown, you and, gotta be vulnerable. And how about Lewis coming around? The man is ready. Give him the ball. Delivers. Come off the bench, Savion Lewis. His first three of the game. He's in double figures with eleven. Eleven on the other end. Harid with the basket. Forty-two thirty-one. Coming up on four minutes off the clock here in the second half. That's a big possession by Canisius. It really was. I mean, you know, Quinnipiac's got up fourteen points and. You turn around, and you get your three, and they answer right back. Harid, his first field goal of the game to give him three. Ragoni against Yako Fritz. And Seth Pinkney putting the ball on the floor again. Did that in the first half. Belonk trying to get inside. Misses. Gets his own miss. Belonk blocked underneath. The ball saved by White. Terrific job by Jelani White trailing the play. And now gets back in. And the whistle stopping the clock. Our first break of the second half. Piac by 11 at home against Canisius. The 42 1. Quinnipiac, we see more than a campus. We see a community built to ignite passions. We see more than a degree. We see the careers of tomorrow. We see more than a student. We see someone destined to make an impact. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain. And we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. You've seen us on the court, and now, for the first time... How about we do a timeout for a great true story? You see us spread the greatness of African-American culture by reading books for you that will make you laugh, cry, sing, and learn. Basketball players and coaches support black culture and social justice by reading diverse books in an entertaining and engaging way for all kids. So make a timeout and go to www.timeoutforblacklives.com today, a MAC initiative. At Quinnipiac, we see more than a campus. We see a community built to ignite passions. We see more than a degree. We see the careers of tomorrow. We see more than a student. We see someone destined to make an impact. Quinnipiac breaking from the huddle. Jacob Bragoni. And double figures with 12 points, four of five from behind the three-point line. At Belonk, Savion Lewis also breaking from the huddle. J.J. Riggins, his first time on the floor here in the second half, spelling Seth Pinckney. 
And it will be Canisius basketball. Canisius in the first half, one of 11 on threes. They've knocked down two of the first three from behind the arc. Here's Jelani White on the inbounds pass right at the basket. Well, you got to be aware defensively, right? I mean, the last thing that uh, quarterback was thinking was a loud pass, but as a defender, that's got to be the first thing you're thinking about. Coming up on five minutes off the clock, you hear defense in the background. That from the Canisius bench. Belonk on the dribble, reversing direction. Belonk on the baseline. Second defender leaves. Back door, McGuire out for Lewis. Shot clock at two. Lewis too strong on the jumper. And Lewis trying to poke it away. And a foul is going to be called. It's going to be called on Jordan Henderson. Well, that's a tough call against Canisius. Absolutely. I, I, I thought two guys were going to go for the ball. I, I give Lewis a lot of credit. Yeah. That's a tough whistle there. Take a chance to take a look at this out of bounds play, you know, and, and Riggins got to know, what can my man do to hurt me? The only thing he can do is lob, and Riggins was not aware. He figured, hey, the scout tells me he's going to go down, set a screen. Really good play there by Weatherspoon. Recognition there as well with Pinkney on the bench. Lewis inside, scoop shot with the right hand, gets it to fall. Savion Lewis off the bench with 13. He is 5 of 7 from the field. When his numbers are facing the rim, when three is looking at the rim and he's squared up, he's very difficult to play. When he gets his back three looking at the rim, he makes mistakes. Now, I thought that might have been the worst shot I've ever seen anybody take when White just shot it from the top of the key. And then I'm like, no, that's Derek Wittenberg. That was a pass to Lorenzo Charles, and he catches it. But I think the Bobcats thought it was a shot because they all turn their heads, having someone get the ball down the other end, and, you know, you don't finish up another play. Well, Canisius is known for their high-low offensive attack, so you've got to be ready for that. Look and at Reggie it. Weatherspoon. Sorry, he's over there doing the Cupid Shuffle with the official a little bit. Di, did you check it out? You, didn't, you don't have the monitor. Well, I don't think he enjoyed that call made at half court in the previous play. Yeah, well, the mask will help you because you can't really tell if a coach is mad nowadays, right? Eight-point game. Canisius in the first half, down by as many as 15. McGuire on the dribble. A lot of contact with McGuire and Fitz. Lewis lost it. Ball on the floor. And also going down, Armand Harid. And Canisius has started the, the second half with a lot more energy. You know they had their legs now underneath them. They've had one half of basketball in. And you can see they're more in sync, and they're playing you know, better basketball. They're putting pressure on the ball a little bit, and they're getting away with a little push and shove, which I don't mind because they're calling them equal. But that has definitely slowed down the dribblers of Quinnipiac. Lewis reverses direction, didn't use a screen, trying to finish with the left hand, unable to do so. And a foul is going to be called in the backcourt, I believe, on Taimu Shinnery. That was a tough call because it looked like there was an extra step there. It looks like it was a little bit of a walk, and Shinnery uh, just uh, put a little bit of body there. Well, they've cut in the deficit, and now Majesty Brandon, their leading scorer who comes off the bench, checks into the game. He was 0-4 from the field, only point coming from the free throw line in the first half, played 10 minutes. Well, again, they're doing it with energy. You know, they're not doing it with something you're going to go ahead and put in your uh, files and say this is the best basketball game Canisius ever played. But their effort has been outstanding. Absolutely. Green inside. Green finishes against Pinckney, and it's a six-point game. Can I talk about, listen, man, one of your responsibilities is to play hard. But playing hard isn't enough. you got to be able to compete. And right now, Canisius is really competing at a high level. Canisius right back in this game. 21 points over the first 20 minutes. They've scored 17 here. And the first six minutes plus, almost seven minutes. McGuire, a lot of dribbling, gives off for Shinnery. Shot clock down to eight. Shinnery. Got an opening. Goes inside and finishes. Big basket for Shinnery. Big basket for Quinnipiac. Oh, and don't call a technical foul. You made a good offensive play. You've got, okay, you did call a technical foul because why? He was happy because he made a shot? Come on. Really good job by Shinnery. Good stop and go. 
good, clean defense, is up, contest it, lays it in, and goes, what? What? Yeah, I know you were happy, Shinnery. You you flexed a little bit to yourself. You weren't showing anybody up. It didn't look like he was in, right in the face. Oh, wow. Man, you know, the only thing we didn't see were his lips. If, if he said something to the opponent or I. Wow. Fritz, 14 points, two of two from the line. And Shinnery, who has gotten himself into foul trouble in previous games, picking up the personal there. That's his third. Ragoni also has three. Williams has two. Riggins and Lewis both have two as well. They work it inside, and the finish by Malik Green. And we've got a four-point game. 21-12 star for Canisius here in the second half. Well, there is Seth Pinkney in the middle of the Quinnipiac huddle. He'll be on the floor out of the timeout. Pinkney in this game, 7.7 .7 rebounds, three block shots. Quinnipiac as a team, seven block shots. Now 65 as a team this year, ranked in the top 25 nationally, averaging 4.8 per game as a team. And Pinkney, 43 blocks last year, add three more to his total this year, 33 with plenty of games on the schedule, uh, still remaining on the schedule. Went back, Usman Drame from 2011 to 2015. 217 blocks in 123 career games. Had 88 in that 14-15 season, Bill Mecca. Well, Usman Drame was, boy, I tell you what, that brings back good memories. You have a chance to see him play, Steve. You never saw him play, did you? I saw him as a fan in the stands. Did you? Yeah, yes, I did. Boy, he was outstanding. And one of those guys, when you come in the gym and you watch warm-ups, here's McGuire hitting on the three-pointer. Quinnipiac needed that. Canisius to within four. little breathing room as the lead is back up to seven. Well, well, well designed by Baker Dunleavy over on the bench. And that was a play they came down with energy. They knew what they needed to do. And McGuire was confident when he took the ball up. Yeah, that was well said by both of you. The one thing they also did on that possession, it's the most focused I've seen this team in a while, right? And, and that's the thing that lacks, I think, on a consistent basis if you're a fan of Quinnipiac. The focus consistently on the offense, the defense, on the loose balls, and on the out-of-bounds plays. They just don't focus. Courtright in the starting lineup. Hits on his first field goal of the game. 
And that's a lot of attempts too, right, Steven? Was 0 of 9 to start, 1 of 10 for Courtright. Career highs and points and assists in game one against Fairfield last Sunday. Green missing on the three. And it's going to stay on this end of the floor. Quinnipiac foul. Fritz stays active. Matt Belong picking up the personal foul. Bob Katz with a little breathing room as Kanisha is able to get it to within four. Lewis on the feed for McGuire, who knocked down the three. And then Louis Courtright, first field goal of the game, getting inside. For este verano colecciona momentos con Shell. Cargando combustible con la compra de lubricantes, llévate uno de los divertidos personajes de Soul. ¿Esto es el cielo? No, es el gran antes. Y mira Soul de Disney Pixar. Disponible ahora solo en Disney+. Plus. Fifty-one forty-two, Quinnipiac leading Canisius here at the People's United Center in Hamden, Connecticut. Reggie Witherspoon, fifth-year head coach, Quinnipiac uh, for Canisius. Bobcats opened up sixteen-two run over the first ten minutes of the first half. Since then, Canisius cutting it down to four here in the second half. Bobcats with five straight points, up by nine. Fritz going to work against Belong. Pick me the block. Here's Lewis in a foot race into the front court. And Lewis goes hard to the floor. Block is going to be called on Amadou Fofana. Fofana can't believe it. And Fofana there, going back to Shinnery, picking up a technical foul earlier in this half. Fofana there, more animated than Shinnery was at any point after scoring his bucket and being called for the tee. No question. And a great block by Pickney. Keeps it in play. And now Lewis is waiting for someone to run with him. No one's there. And he takes it to the hole. And it, I think Vermouden's not concerned about Fallon. I think he was concerned that he thought the step through may have been a travel on Lewis. And, and looking at it, I'm not sure, Di, right? So, you know, I can see what he was talking about. But remember, we have said for earlier on that the play always goes to the offense. You know, the hey. call is going to go to the offense. Yeah, you, so true. Ten-point game. Lewis goes one of two from the line. He's got 14 and now leads Quinnipiac in scoring. Ragoni has 12 on four threes. Green inside, no good. Fight for the rebound. Green goes to the floor, kicks it out, gets it out to Brandon, elevates on the jumper, and hits. That was just a hustle play. Well, those are plays Quinnipiac's got to make, right? And those are plays that you see a Canisius team continues to make. Those are winning plays, and there's no reason Quinnipiac doesn't come up with that ball. Majesty Brandon, see if that gets him going. First made field goal. Lewis to the bucket, counted in a foul. Boy, he plays north to south, man. He's really difficult to play. Like when he goes in straight lines and he goes on 45-degree angles and the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, he gets inside there. And really good, strong move by Lewis, who's uh, 
He's had one of those games, I think, where we were waiting for Lewis to have. I think this is maybe his most complete game, with the exception of the dude just doesn't make his free throws. One of two on the last trip, unable to convert on the three-point play on the missed free throw. Bobcats by 10. A little over nine minutes off the clock. Fritz gives off. Brandon, three, no. And the rebound underneath for Pinckney, his eighth rebound of the game. And he jumped, right? I think Pinckney learns to jump on his rebound on the move. He'll lead the country in rebounding. McGuire is going to be called for the foul, cleared out with the right forearm. And that sent Yako Fritz to the ground. That dude can guard Yako Fritz at 6'10". He's done a really good job. You know, he ain't the widest dude in the world, but he really does a good job moving his feet. He definitely stays centered. So, I had fun watching him play. Probably like McGuire would imagine he had point guard at some point on his resume, then all of a sudden grew to six foot ten. And he, he pulls up different defensive assignments, so you know he can shuffle his feet. He can guard perimeter, he can guard post. Well, he was 5'8 at birth, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> he grew a lot. Out on the perimeter, looking inside. Harid splashes home the three-pointer. 54-47. Midpoint, second half. Does Canisius have enough? Take it from a guy who coached a lot of teams who was behind. We'd exert a lot of energy to get back into it. But most of the time, we just didn't have enough to get over the top. Can, can Canisius get over the top? Lewis, the turnover, as Majesty Brandon was able to keep it from going out of bounds. Reverses direction on McGuire, gets inside. He's heating up. They have four-point play there, right? Lewis, turnover. Two you don't get, two your opponent gets in transition. Quinnipiac's done a good job guarding Canisius five on five. Have not been as fortunate in transition. Brandon averages 12 and a half a game. He's got five points. He can get going here. Late stages of the second half. He can keep Canisius in this game. Ragoni answers at the other end as he hits on the three-pointer. Ragoni, his fifth three of the game. That ties his season high at the other end. Fofana missing. Pinckney the rebound. Boy, Ragoni's made some big threes today, huh, Di? Any time the Quinnipiac needed it? And that was a tough shot because you can see Baker Dunleavy called a play for Seth, and Seth was getting, being held. So Jake took the shot as a second thought and nailed it. Well, that should have been a second thought, three, two here. One, I think he should have passed up, right? They make one. They got the ball back with a chance to go double figures. You just take it a little too early without any help. Down the bucket for Malik Green. He'll go to the line for one. Jake, five threes in the game for the sixth time in his career. He's hey. also got two games where he's hit seven threes in a game. And it was just a bad. It was just a bad shot by uh, by. Yeah, it was a good call there. Bad shot by Ragoni because the first pass of a fast break is a bad shot. No one knew Jake was going to shoot it, so they were in no position to go to the offensive boards, and they were no. In more importantly, they weren't in any position as a team to defend transition because they didn't think a shot was coming. So once the shot goes, you get a long rebound, and you see Canisius in transition having an opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play. And Green hits on the free throw. Canisius is just playing faster this half. You know, they're, they're looking for some transition buckets. They have a bounce in their step, making it difficult for the Bobcats. Yeah, they're playing with a lot more confidence, right? I think you see the ball go in the basket. I think it's, it's a lot easier to play with confidence. You're down 16-2, to two and there's a lot of doubt. Tyrese Williams hits the three-pointer. Well, I'll tell you what, I give him credit. The last thing I would do if I was on the bench for 18 minutes is go in the game and shoot a three. But God bless Tyrese Williams for taking it. Well, they gave him all the space, and he knows he can hit it. He's got to make his move. Harid hits on the other end for Canisius to make it a six-point deficit. Williams, eight threes, 26 points on the road. Career high in both threes and points last year against Canisius. Bobcats with 8.02 to go, up six. All right, we'll stay here. Quinnipiac with 8.02 to go. Our next whistle likely gets us under the eight-minute timeout. Six-point lead. 
for the Bobcats who are trying to improve to five and two at home on the season. They've won two of three. Split with Niagara a couple of weekends ago here at the People's United Center in Hendon, Connecticut. And split last weekend with Fairfield, but up in this game by 15 in the first half against a Canisius team that hasn't played. We've chronicled it since January 1st and January 2nd. 40-plus days for Canisius between games. And they need games on their schedule right now for the resume. As they play, this is just their seventh game so far. If they play the remainder, uh, the remainder of their schedule, they'll get to 14. But right now, if you're Quinnipiac, up 15 against a team that hasn't played in a long time, you've made this a game. But so is Canisius in terms of their shooting for the second half. As they are 13 of 22, and they've knocked down three threes after going one of 11 behind the arc in the first 20 minutes. Well, I think the challenge you have now, and again, the decision I think you have for Quinnipiac is you're just going to continue to play and play carefree. They've been carefree in the offensive end. And quite honestly, I enjoy that part of basketball. I have a little concern sometimes when coaches or staffs or programs get careful with that six-point lead with eight to go. And I found, dive through my years of coaching, careful causes you to be careless. And now is, I think, the time to put your foot on the gas. This is a tired Canisius team. They're having some success. But this is where I go at them with another fresh. I press a little bit. I start doing some things to get them a little more uncomfortable. Couldn't agree more. I did not like playing careful because careful, you have to think more. And when you think too much out here, it takes away from your ability to get to the basket and move. You have to think about moving and instead of just playing and whatever got you there, you keep going. You go to the dance, you come home with the same person. Well, most of the time, <laughs> you should. <laughs> nowadays, I always did. But nowadays, I don't think that's a thing. I think you do whatever you do. I'm telling do, myself do to you. be silent here. <laughs> <laughs> I think Billy's starting to wear off on you, Diane Nolan. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Shinnery out of the timeout. Going against Fritz. Fritz, good defense. Foul. And it's going to be on Quinnipiac. Now, you mentioned this earlier. Fritz is involved in almost every defensive play that Canisius is defending. I mean, he is guarding perimeter, post, and he's got good lateral movement. He really does have good lateral movement. He has a really high basketball IQ, too, and never puts himself in a position where he doesn't have the ability to have success. And I think that's obviously your goal as a basketball player. Foul on Jamil Riggins, his third. Shinnery, Riggins to the bench, McGuire, and Pinkney back in. If memory serves right in that win against Niagara, remember, Baker Dunleavy did something, and I forgot to ask Sean Morris about this earlier this week when we talked with him. As the first one is down. Remember that Niagara win? They closed it out. They played the same five. And I remember McGuire was on the floor. They played the same five for at least the final eight minutes of the well, second half. Steven, it might have been longer, right? Who we have out there? You had uh... – you had Courtright, you had uh, McGuire, you had Shinnery, you had Rigoni. And Pickney. Uh, and and Pickney. Pickney. And they had some success. Now, listen, it's a five-point game. Here's a big possession here for the Bobcats. Williams, the ball in his hands, gives for Rigoni. Rigoni holds on to it. Looking to go against Yako Fritz. Rigoni inside, flips it up and gets it to fall. Seven-point lead. And Ragoni now is 17. I don't know if I've seen him play better offensively. I think, Jake, with the exception of that one shot, I think every possession has been just about perfect. Ofana inside, off glass and in. Seth, you got to contest that, right? You got to go ahead. The little man takes it in there now. You're away from him. You're not going to foul. You got to contest that. Under seven to go, five-point game. Court right. Going inside. Fritz the rejection. Fofana pulls up, pass deflected. Good job by Williams. And Ragoni able to get it to McGuire. Uh, what a winning play there by Jacob Ragoni. McGuire gets inside. Jake open. Gets his man in the air. One dribble, three short. Rebound underneath. Yako Fritz. Fofana looking inside. Force that pass. Turnover. Canisius, their 10th of the game. They got to run your best here now. Canisius had two opportunities to cut this to a one possession game. And if you're the catch, you got to do what you're supposed to do here. You're at home. You got to go ahead and make a play. Court right. Little hesitation. Pinckney not ready for the pass. Out of bounds off Canisius. 
14 to shoot, 6.07 remaining in regulation. As Amadou Fofana goes to the bench, and Majesty Brendan checks back in. That, that pass has to be thrown in practice, right? Because all the time in games, they're throwing it up in the air. In practice, they're throwing it up in the air. There's going to be times you can't throw it up in the air. Throw it on his chest, and Pickney's needs to get comfortable catching a chest pass. Court right inside, throws it up no good. Forced that one. Quickly the other way, Majesty Brandon. Brandon off glass, no. Fritz keeps it alive, misses inside. Ball loose, Williams comes away with it for Quinnipiac. Well, unlucky, unlucky by Fritz, right? Right place, right time again for Canisius and misses a bunny. Court right up top. Ragoni the screen. Fritz got no problem guarding out here neither, right? Doesn't affect him in the least bit. Oh, no. Turnover there. Green. Had it poked away. Brandon dribbles out. Brandon the three. Knocks it down. His first three of the game. He's got eight. They had to stick to it, and, it's, and that's not a word, but I tell you what, that's what they've done. Canisius has been relentless on their pursuit of the ball, and Quinnipiac's careless. Courtright, another turnover, deflected that one, fortunate there. And Courtright will be replaced by Savion Lewis in the lineup, as Baker Dunleavy will talk with the first-year player, Louis Courtright. And remember, that's now two turnovers in a row where he's trying to get the ball to Pinckney well beyond the three-point line. And now a two-point game. Canisius can tie here with a two or go ahead with a three. Majesty Brandon just knocking down a three-pointer. And Riggins is going to check in for Pinckney. Under five remaining. Quinnipiac 17 fouls. Canisius five. Up top, Henderson too strong over the backboard out of bounds. And Quinnipiac fortunate there because Fritz was underneath. That ball comes down. You know he's at least going to get a hand on it. You can't let Kinesis take the lead. And, and that's got to be your goal here, right? I mean, they've done a good job defensively. Only five personal fouls. But at worst, if you're Quinnipiac here, you got to get yourself fouled. So you're playing with Kinesis with the thought of being in the one-on-one. Kinesis earlier in the half got it down to four at 46-42. Bobcats then scored five in a row. Riggins going inside, missing. Ragoni tried to keep it alive. Canisius numbers. Can Tyre take the lead here? Pull up jumper by Harid off the mark. Fritz tried to keep it alive, unable to do so. And the ball in the hands of Ragoni. I actually feel bad for Canisius. They've had three really good looks. And the ball just hasn't gone in. A lot of bodies around the rim. And that affects your shot. Riggins and crunch time on the floor. Lewis called for the travel. Turnover Quinnipiac. 16th of the game. And again, Canisius the ball. 4-0-1 remaining. They can tie it up here or go in front. You know, as you were guard, you're sitting there saying, big fella can't guard me. Like, Fritz can't play me, right? There's no way he can guard me. But every time Fritz is matched up against anybody, guess what? He can guard you. And he's done that all game long. He's had different defensive assignments out here. And he makes you think twice on the offensive end. Yeah, he's out of the game right now, which is fortunate for cornerback. That matchup is really hurt him. Amadou Fofana with the basketball. Lewis works through the screen. Bobcat switch to his own. Fofana for the lead. He got it. Canisius in front for the first time since they led 2-0 in the opening minute of the game. Oh, and that gives him a lot of hope, a lot of energy, and uh, Fofana, deep one against Quinnipiac zone. Let's see what the Cats can do here to answer. McGuire comes up top on the wing. Bounce pass inside. They're going to Riggins here. They put the ball in his hands a couple of times. And Riggins fouled. Foul is going to be on Meslinikov. And the Bobcats will have free throws when we come back.
three pointers for Canisius in the game. Is three a few moments ago, putting Canisius in front for the first time since early on in the first half. Working against Lewis, well behind the three point line, all the confidence in the world. Yeah, you know, Quinnipiac's in his own, and Lewis didn't have to go try to beat him over top of that screen, right? He just needed to be in his own and get your hands up. Quinnipiac went zone, but they didn't move their hands, and, you know, Canisius was able to square. You take a peek at the field goal, it's just, you know, you didn't weren't going to shoot as bad as they did in the first half. In the second half, they've been on fire, and, you know, they've been relentless on the defensive end, and they made everything, and you tip your hat to Weatherspoon in that Canisius program all for 41 days, and the they could have stopped playing early, and they didn't. And they're getting more shot opportunities. They've taken 69 shots, and the Bobcats have taken 53. But it killed them on the offensive boards, right? And Quinnipiac's turning it over. So, you know, all those little numbers that – those little things really do make a difference when it comes by that – when you tally up the score at the end of the game. Riggins misses both. Canisius, 15-7 advantage on the offensive boards. They're outscoring Quinnipiac, 16-2, second chance points. Now Canisius with the ball, playing with the lead. Majesty Brandon, Fofana, inside green, comes to the jump stop against J.J. Riggins, misses, foul going to be called, and it's going to be on Ragoni. Yeah, right. Fritz just continues to work hard, you know, and, and I think we're only did a really good job getting the body off. I, 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 you know, I think it was unfortunate. I don't think it was a, a, an elbow. I think we'll get to see it. But uh, Fritz has made it. He's like the green flies at the beach, right? You're at ham and acid. You're kind of chilling in the summer. It's 90 degrees, and all of a sudden the green flies come, and they just won't leave you alone. That's it. That's been Fritz. You make it down my way once in a while, do you? I did, you know, and I – from. Uh, you know, being from Maryland, and as and Don knows, like the real beach is Ocean City, Maryland, Ocean City, New Jersey. There you like go. they really got waves. And when we moved to Connecticut back in '78, people started talking about the beach and Hammond Asset and how beautiful the beach was. And Jeannie and I were ecstatic about coming to Connecticut and getting there. And then we went there, and I was like, "Well, there's no waves. What is this called? like? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a pond, you know?" So. God, you know, we're going to get an explanation here the, uh, as Yako Fritz will take another look here. And a potential okay, flagrant foul on Jacob Ragoni. Ragoni picking up his fourth foul. Elbow came up right in the face of Fritz, and he's got he's he's got a bloody nose over there at least, if not a cut above the nose. Well, if we could take a peek at that one more time, I think what you'll see from Ragoni is I think you'll see both his left arm and his right arm extended on a box out, right? It's not like one arm was out. So he had left it on perfectly straight, sort of like a lifeguard at the beach. So he boxes out with his left arm and his right arm straight out. He goes after to get the ball. And I just think it's a natural basketball play. It's unfortunate to hit Fritz. I'm not saying that. But I, knowing look, Ragoni the way we know Ragoni, he would never do anything intentional. It didn't look like he swung it away from his body plane toward Fritz's head. Yeah, definitely a foul. Definitely an opportunity to get a couple points from the line, and but I don't think there's anything intentional there. Jason Mirabirdo, Ryan Corbett, and Tony Meeks are three officials, and Yako Fritz is over at the end of the bench for Canisius, and I believe Blood. And we can get a little closer there. Yeah, he's putting on. Yeah, he's got some blood on his hands, and they're just trying to make sure that it all gets removed. You can see they're trying to plug that up right now in the nose area and in the nose, and he would be the one. His eyes got to be watering right now as well. Well, he's, he's done an incredible job. The reason Canisius is – There's a smile. The reason Canisius is in this game and they've taken the lead in this game is because Fritz didn't stop playing from the very beginning, even though when they were getting uh, house called early by this Quinnipiac team. He's got 15 points to lead Canisius in scoring. Four of seven from the field. Seven of nine at the line where he's made his living. Eight rebounds. He's got two blocks, and we're going to get the explanation. It is a one and one. Thank you, sir. A common foul on the rebound, and they're going to shoot one and one. And, we'll and I think that's there. the right call. It was, yeah. I mean, again, we don't want anybody to see get hurt. Don't want to have any blood, but, you know, I, I think it was clear that um, – there was no purpose or intent there. Again, that is the fourth on Jake Ragoni. 
Shinnery has three. Riggins also has three. And Fritz is going to be able to stay in the game as this break also gave him a few moments to get attended to. And you know what that's going to do? It's going to give me an opportunity. We saw the athletic trainer over there, Tyler LaMonaco. Another moment where I feel old. Brockport class of 2017. I've got him by 20 years at Brockport. So safe to say that you did not cross paths? We did not. No, no. No, we did not. Fritz at the line. Opportunity here in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You graduated from college in 1997? I did. I was on the five-year plan. Oh, my goodness. Two-point game. You're trying to do the math, and you're what? Uh, no, I'm are you not. Are look at me did, differently now? I didn't know you were that young, dude. I graduated from You know, he college. said that last year. I asked him how old he thought I was, and he had me closer to 50 than I want to be ever. Yeah, I not graduated from college in 1978. God, you're a kid, dude. <laughs> I am not getting in that conversation. <laughs> well, whatever year you graduated, you're way better looking than me. So I tip my hat to whatever you're doing. <laughs> uh, Two-point game, under three to go. Steve Lennox, Bill Mecca, Diane Nolan, Tyrese Williams up top. Misses on the three, rebound underneath Malik Green. Canisius going in front. On a three by Fofana. He's got the ball in his hands, and Reggie Witherspoon doesn't want an empty trip here. He's going to talk things over right here, and we'll keep it. And a two-point game. Same two teams on Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN3. Coming up from the People's United Center, 4 o'clock Eastern this afternoon, Quinnipiac University women's basketball team in action against Fairfield. And that one will be on ESPN+. Plus. Nick Zerbinski, Diane Nolan, and Bill Mecca will be here for that one. Diane, you're, you've been – that one's sort of been on, circled on the schedule, Bill Mecca, for our partner and, of course, head coach Trish Fabry as well. Well, obviously, you know, we spent a lot of good years down in Stagville, and it's always uh, fun when, you know, you're playing against your alma mater. Oh, it, it adds that instant – or there's Coach Fabry right now. It adds that – extra component to it and right now they're neck and neck in the standings so not only is it an in-state game and someone who played there going against their old school but also number one seed could be right here this afternoon i'll put you on the spot here that was your school you, you, you put them on the women's basketball map you left fairfield you continue to coach is that your favorite spot well it's been my longest one you know, and you have to remember, while I was there, I was married. I had our three children. We raised our family there. So it always has a soft spot in my heart. Awesome. Right. Diane, awesome. 28 years at Fairfield, 456 wins. Fofana, the jumper, no. Ball batted up in the air. Pinckney bats it to Williams. So let's have a purpose and a focus to this possession. Let's do something that makes sense. Pinkney inside, count the bucket for the big man, and a foul. And all of that made sense, right? You run a secondary break, you drop the ball into the corner, you flatten out the defense, and then you're in a position when you do that, you're able to turn around and Pinkney can play one-on-one -on -one down low. On a bounce pass, Pinkney catches this thing and makes a play, turns inside on a great defensive effort, and finishes it now. Listen, this is big here because you got to take the lead, and the Cats haven't shot a well, Stevie. What are we from the foul line? 8 of 13, Riggins a few moments ago missing. And 12 for 26 the other day against Fairfield, right? So, you, you know, Morgan Wooten taught me a long time ago, who was my high school coach, free throws win and lose basketball games. Dribble the ball out, Chiru. Shinnery got the offensive rebound after the miss by Pinckney. Henderson kicks it out. Green up top. Gives it off for Brendan. Now Fritz, one dribble, back door. Fofana lays it in. Canisius by two, coming up on 90 seconds to go. Really good job on the deny. You know, again, we talk about making a basket cut to the back of the head. You turn, look at the ball. Really good execution by Canisius. Two-point Canisius lead. Quinnipiac, two timeouts remaining. Canisius one. Lewis inside. Shot batted away. Terrific rejection by Green. They can be patient here. Yeah, they're just moving a lot more fluid, a lot more confidence, a lot more pace to their play. 
One minute to go. Canisius, two-point lead. Pass inside. And Green working against Pinckney draws the foul on Pinckney. Malik Green, 63% free throw shooter on the season going to the line. Yeah, I'd like to take a peek at that. I'd like to see that. Yeah, it looked like Pickney was like, wait a minute, I don't think I fouled him. So I, you get a better look here, get some understanding, and Famous played well here in the second half. He really has. Two-point game, two free throws. Green, nine points, four of 12 overall from the field. And he gets the first one to fall. Yeah, really good feed by Fritz and a really good finish by Fumu. And we get a chance to see here. They feed it in a low post on a nice, clever pass on the block by Green, which leads to the next possession. He knew he was going to block it, too. None of that affected him, right? Lewis is shaking and baking, getting to the rim, and Green said, no, I got this. And that's that loose ball that you've got to go and attack and pick up. Two-possession game, 55.7. Four-point lead, Canisius. Got a purpose here. Got to have a purpose. Going to get a timeout here. You set something up, and... Confident Quinnipiac will come out of here and put ourselves in a position where maybe we'll get a Ragoni with the ball so he makes a decision on he's going to take a two or a three. Quinnipiac late in the first half. Threes from Ragoni and Taimu Shinnery to go up by 15. They led by 13 at halftime. And for Canisius, one of 11 on threes in the first half, 50%, five of 10 in the second half. And right now, you can also set up your defense if you're Baker Dunleavy. You know, you're going to make an offensive play here, and then you've got to know what you're going to do on the defensive end. Quinnipiac, 19 fouls. So the next team foul for Quinnipiac, it'll be two shots the rest of the way for Canisius. And Golden Griffin, 17 fouls. So if they foul in a non-shooting situation, it'll be one and one for Quinnipiac for a couple more. And the Bobcats, as we've stated here, 8 of 14 overall from the free throw line. But just 1 of 6, 7 of 8 in the first half, 1 of 6 at the line in the second half. There you go. And a lot of those on the front end are 1 of 1. So, you know, you're blowing opportunities. And, that, you know, we got on another topic, but they were 12 for 26 from the foul line the other night against Fairfield, right? I mean, those are 14 points if you just subtract the right way, let alone the front end. So, Missed free throws, even though it's a team that's shooting 70% for the season. The last couple games have come back to haunt this Quinnipiac basketball team. Largest lead of the game for Canisius at four with 52.2 to go. Quinnipiac on the floor, Canisius on the floor. Each team with one timeout remaining. McGuire will inbound. We got Williams. McGuire to the rim. Pickney comes down with it. They give it to Williams on a three. He fell to the ground, shot, missed. Yako Fritz the rebound, and he'll have two shots at the other end. Well, it was a great out-of-bounds play, and, and, and Pickney goes up with that one to dunk it. I do think what Pickney maybe would think about is come straight down when I jump and then go right back up where you were, right? The pass shouldn't have taken you out of a position where you should have scored. There was nobody around you. Great out-of-bounds play. Catch it. Gather yourself and then turn around and finish. And there's a chance to maybe take a peek at Williams' three. Um, it looked as if in his eyes he thought maybe he was touched a little bit, but, uh, you know, no call there. And uh, maybe the player of the game, I think, for Canisius, regardless of what the numbers say, Fritz on the foul line. He, he He's kept this team together. He certainly has, and, and he's done it in multiple ways, offensively, defensively. And he's playing out here after taking a mean shot to the nose. Six-point game, foul out on the perimeter. As Lewis had the ball in his hands, Quinnipiac started Lewis, uh, Louis Courtright at point guard. And Courtright, in his first career start, one of 12 from the field. And four turnovers as Lewis at the line, one in one situation. It's been Lewis. And he misses. The ball batted out. Ball loose. Ends up in the hands of Lewis. Williams elevates for the three. Knocks it down. 
Three-point game with 35.3 to go and a timeout call. Well, you get fortunate there if you're Quinnipiac, right, because you get a missed free throw on the front end, and Ragoni, right place, right time, gets the offensive rebound, gives the shot up, and hits Williams, and Williams finally knocks one down. And that's something that we wanted to see from the Bobcats. That second effort, the loose ball on the ground, go after it, make a play, and Lewis was able to. Well, you know what you defined right there, which popped just coming in my head? Desperation. But you should play college basketball every possession as desperation when there's a loose ball. It shouldn't be because you're down six with 55 seconds to go that I got to be desperate to come up with a loose ball. That should be part of who you are as a player and as a team, right, Di? I mean, that's something that... And that's the next step that the Bobcats as a they young take squad it up. need to take. Yeah, well said. Well said. And we've seen that from Canisius, right? They played desperate throughout the whole game. And I don't think it was because they were down 16-2. to two. I just think that's because how they play. And then remember, this is their first game in 42 days. So they had to, you know, get their legs underneath them. And then they know it's a joy to be out here. They're playing. Three-point game. On the inbound, Shinnery guarding the inbounder. They get it to Fritz at the free throw line. He turns and gets it ahead to Fofana, and Fofana fouled by Savion Lewis. Double bonus situation, three-point game, 31.1 remaining. And Fofana will go to the line for his first free throw attempts of the game. He's at 88.9%. 16 of 18 on the year. <laughs> so as we, I was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. We moved to Bowie, Maryland as he misses the free throw when I was probably four, five, six years old. And I remember our car trips back. We would go see my grandmother and my, my mom and dad's relatives, and we would sing that thing, fee fi fo fana fo fana <laughs> They don't sing that anymore. Die, you do that in PE? No. We no. Do we gotta we gotta put that into your bag. Is that the class. is that the banana? The banana song. The banana song, right? song yes. <laughs> yeah. Miss on the first, hits on the second. Four yeah. point game, two possession game, thirty one point one. Well, I got plenty of time, right? Plenty of time here now for Quinnipiac to go ahead and get one. Lewis for Agoni. Jake front end a uh, front rim, no. Ball saved. Pinkney the foul. Armand Harid got the loose ball. Harid to the other end for two. And a four-point game at 17.8 to go. They took about 14 seconds off the clock there. Well, hindsight's 20-20, right? You had an option there as a coach and a player to make a decision. Am I just going to go get an easy two? But Kinesis really didn't give up the easy two. Typically, they guard the three-point line. They wouldn't let Lewis turn the corner there and you know, we're going to who's has one heck of an offensive game for Quinnipiac, you know, just misses a three. First three free throw is off the mark, so it remains a two possession game. And it got a really good look in terms of a good feed, just a little bit short. And Kanisha's done a good job keeping Pickney off that offensive glass. Kanisha's 50 points in the second half after scoring 21 in the first half. And two in the first eight minutes of the game. Still a two possession game. Fofana against Lewis. Content to take time off the clock. Williams misses. Fofana the rebound. And a foul stops the clock with 7.4 to go. Canisius, one out of two trips at the line, a couple of trips here. But now they can close it out and pick up a victory and look for the sweep against the Bobcats here in Hamden on Saturday with a 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern start time on ESPN3. Kinesis earned it, and they've outplayed this Quinnipiac team. Um, you know, and we saw signs of it in the uh, first half where we discussed a little bit in, in terms of Kinesis trying to make this a game where you're using an SUV, and Quinnipiac was using a Jaguar on a sports car, and they wanted to slow the game down a little bit, make it ugly. They turned it into a physical game, and it gave them enough momentum and energy to have a really strong offensive second half. 74-67, 7.4 to go. Fofana again, pressure in the backcourt against Lewis. Lewis will pull up, elevate on the three. That one off the mark. 
Rebound, Canisius. There's the final horn. And Canisius down 15 in the first half, down 13 at halftime. Golden Griffins come back, earn their fourth win of the season, and they beat the Bobcats 74-67 here at the People's United Center. Well, the, the, the ahead, curse Don. never came out, never got rattled out here. You know, the Bobcats played some strong defensive possessions, but you knew that the Golden Griffins were just steady Eddie out here, did what they needed to do, and made some big shots coming 